When I came the first time, I was 19 years old, and it was amazing to see all this forest, and suddenly you can see a dolphin jumping in, on, on the water, and I fall in love with the, with the dolphins. So I decided to put my life to study the dolphins and the aquatic ecosystem of the Orinoco. This trembling of the air, this solitude, this wild expanse of the river transports the traveler into adventurous nature. This was how Alexander von Humboldt described the Orinoco River. On his research expedition, he spent two and a half months following the mighty waterway, documenting its every twist and turn. For the explorers from Europe, the endless wilderness on land and in the water was a source of continuous wonder and unexpected dangers. Nobody back home expected Humboldt to return alive from his Orinoco expedition. Now, if you want to do a, an expedition, the scientists make a very deep research how to move in an, in an area, they have the best equipment to do that, and Humboldt not. He traveled from Europe to the new continent, uh, very few knowledge about this. So we, we, we have a lot of things to learn still from Humboldt, the endurance, the, the passion, the curiosity, uh, and I think uh, this guy is an example for us, uh, how to put some uh, goals and go behind them. Biologist Fernando Trujillo has a research camp here. It's the base for the international expeditions he leads across the entire river network. Covering an area of almost one million square kilometers, the Orinoco Basin is one of the largest ecosystems in South America. Scientists come here to study its astonishing diversity of species, both in the river itself and in the forests that line it. The basin area is home to 250 different species of mammals and over 100 reptiles. Finding the animals is no easy task for the researchers. Many of the creatures are nocturnal and move territory several times a year. Baker Castaneda Baron grew up here by the Orinoco. He sets up cameras in the forest, fitted with motion sensors that help to study the behavior of the animals over a period of months. We can install these camera traps at various heights. This camera records everything that happens here up to a height of 40 or 50 centimeters. It enables us to record larger animals such as jaguars, tapirs and capybaras. We'll now leave the camera here for at least three months. A few kilometers upstream, the Orinoco squeezes its way through a maze of cataracts. The Atures Rapids are an ecosystem in their own right. 
Nutritious algae grow on the rugged granite rocks, a feast for the fish that pass through here. Over a thousand different species live in the waters of the Orinoco, and many of them exclusive to the river. This place is dangerous. If you don't know the river, you could overturn and drown in the rapids. A young man drowned over there recently. I've been fishing here for 40 years. My father used to bring me here when I was a kid. I wanted to teach my son, but he's lost interest in fishing. For centuries, people here lived off the riches of the Orinoco. To this day, there are still families that move from shore to shore, many of them from Venezuela. They settle wherever there are currently the most fish to catch. But the ecosystem here is out of balance. Increasing river traffic and dam construction have had a disruptive effect on the natural course of the Orinoco. We as a human, we, we need to, to change our, our, our minds and, and, and take care of these places. The rivers are unprotected in most uh, countries. Uh, you protect sometimes the land, but the water, there are few examples in, in Latin America of governments saying, okay, let's, let's protect the rivers. And, and, and the key of, of the ecosystems or, or, and, and the uh, livelihood of many people are the rivers. We, we need healthy rivers for healthy people and for healthy biodiversity. Increasingly, human activities are encroaching on the river's ecosystems. This prompted Fernando Trujillo to buy land here a few years ago and turn it into a reserve. Plant and animal species are able to gradually recover here, protected from deforestation, poaching, and environmental pollution. This is a, a long-necked uh, turtle, so uh, it camouflaged uh, very well uh, with the lips on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's a big mouth, and this is the nose. So they can uh, stay for a lot of time uh, underwater, mm -hmm. in a very shallow water, and they put the, the head, and with the snow, just breath, and then still underwater looking for the, the prey. And when the fish bites, they bite? Yes. Extensive conservation zones help to ensure that a growing number of animals return to the riverside areas, as footage from the camera traps confirms. Each of the animals has its own individual pattern, enabling the researchers to count and track their behavior. One major success for the reserve is the return of the jaguar to the rainforest. The big cats have been under threat due to the loss of their habitat to make way for crop and livestock farming. And they are not the only species to have found a new home in the reserve. At the time of Humboldt, it, it was in, uh, no questions about the, the integrity of the ecosystems. Everything, everything was uh, in a very good conditions, but now no. And we struggle because everything is happening so quickly now. The degradation of the systems are very fast. So if we don't want to, to lose these uh, species and these areas, we need to do something like this, private conservation, and to support as well the national parks. The cacophony of animal sounds on the Orinoco led to sleepless nights for Humboldt, but also to a pioneering concept. 
the animal world faces a constant struggle in which species numbers are constrained by mutual competition. Now, more than two centuries later, their equilibrium has been disturbed. The animal's biggest enemy today is a two-legged species. <laughs> 